Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothi, and this is a Cross Factions Presents Faction Warfare Roundtable follow-up. Um, unfortunately, due to technical glitches, i.e. my own mistake, the first question of this roundtable and the introduction wasn't recorded. Basically, what had happened was we recorded the first Faction Warfare Roundtable, and Jintan took that to CCP, and then someone relatively senior in CCP kicked back a series of questions about faction warfare, kind of wanting very specific feedback from the community. And both Jintan and I thought that this was a big enough of a deal uh, that we wanted to bring the community together as, as fast as possible to get some thoughts on that. Unfortunately, the first question about the main value points, like I said, didn't get recorded although it was more or less about how it is drop-in PvP with very little effort, that a lot of the stuff is taken care of for you, uh, unlike in Null, but also that it shapes the landscape of low sec. So there's less, or there's some more interesting stuff in Faction Warfare space than non-Faction Warfare space because the mechanics of Faction Warfare create that terrain and also apply those people to having desires within it that makes the, that space interesting. So that's the primary value points. Um, either way, we're going to now jump back into the discussion in progress. Through some quick follow-up questions that came as a result of the last uh, one of these that we did um, from a member of CCP. Uh, they wanted to kind of dig a bit deeper. They're someone who doesn't have any first-hand experience with faction warfare. Um, and they wanted to kind of get to grips with what faction warfare could offer like eve in the future right okay so uh i'm just gonna have to make an intro or something like that and, and throw it in there okay so i uh we have another person i think dandelion you asked stuff again right uh yeah kind of but uh, it was just to add a precision to uh, uh it, it can wait it can wait all right, well, all right. I think that's all of the X's for that question, so we can move on to the next one. And this one, actually, I found alarming. Uh, and Jin, Tan, you can tell, you can talk a little bit more to it, but it says, why are not more people participating in this feature? And yeah, so Faction Warfare isn't that popular of a feature. Um, and I guess the question is why. I know what my answer is. Dandelion. Okay, uh, that one is going. That one is going to be pretty easy. I mean, it's it's very simple. Uh, there's two aspects to it, in my opinion. The first one, uh, people, I, I think people just don't don't know about it. I mean, uh, most of the people are going to stay. Uh, I mean, mostly people prefer PV. I'm not going to say. Uh, I don't want to say prefer. Let's say they they. PV is more easily accessible. So they, they come in the game, uh, they start playing, and most of the time, the first thing they have in their face is PV, missions, uh, career, and all the stuff. So if, if they don't have a, a really huge drive to PVP, uh, they are not going to go out there and try to find a way to PVP. They are just going to keep doing mission and again and again, and they will never learn of uh, faction warfare. They, they will maybe go sometimes in low sec if they are crazy enough, and uh, see that uh, weird bar with uh, faction uh, caldera controlled, uh, but they, they they won't really try to 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 learn about it. And most of the time, when they will learn about it, and they they will be like, "Oh, it's a PvP system. People can shoot at me. I'm scared." <laughs> they are going to go back to to Isaac and you know run away. So I I, I think it's. Uh, uh, we, we need to be able to introduce people to this thing so that the people who want to PvP fast, like I just started the game, I want to PvP now, give it to me, so they can know about it. Uh, it's not the case, actually. Uh, I spent two weeks, as I said, uh, uh, searching for ways to PvP. I, I, had to, I had to search to learn about faction warfare. So, yeah, uh, I think that's the first aspect of why it's not that popular. I have a second one, but I'm going to let someone... Uh, Say what you have to say. Perimpu. Yeah, uh, I've actually three things. The first one is the uh, a lot of people are uh, plexing their accounts. Like they need to make a lot of isk to plex their accounts. 
And by writing a NoSec, for example, you can make the ISK uh, a lot quicker with, let, with less risk. Um, I mean, co correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's my experience at least. And the second one is you need to make an alt. So you um, mostly ruin your sex status because you shoot a lot of, uh, a lot of neutrals, a lot of not actually war targets. So that might uh, scare a lot of people off because they won't be able to go into high anymore with that uh, main character. That's actually something I want to talk about a little more is the downsides to joining faction warfare which from my perspective have primarily been the um, trade hub campaign and to a lesser extent, oh sorry, probably actually to a greater extent is the impact that it has on standings, which um, become a problem because there's not very much, there's not very many resources in the client that will tell you on how to deal with your standings. And also sex status, yeah, sex status is another part of that. Yeah, sorry if I took some of your uh, future things. No, 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 do definitely. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, can I just quickly add the third, uh, the third part? Go ahead. Yeah, um, like Dentalian said before, it's uh, he had to search for it. So we have a, um, when I started, the, the tutorial was near to non-existent. But no, uh, right now it's, uh, uh, it was improved to a point where you could say it's really good. But it's still, uh, faction warfare is not really a part of missions and the tutorials and careers. I think so. You have to actually search for it and uh, get to know it by yourself. There was actually a point where um, plexing was a part of the tutorial. That's actually when I started the game. Is the sorry, in, uh, when faction warfare was part of the tutorial. That's when I started the game. I uh, at the end of your advanced military tutorial it would suggest for you to go and enlist and give you a link to uh, the Neocom item that exists for Faction Warfare. Oh, I might have uh, overseen this one then. Mm -hmm. Is that something uh, that's not there in the current Inception tutorial, but it's still there in the advanced military one? Um, do you think having, say, something at the end of... In I, I, I don't know, like, I, I was thinking about maybe having something at the end of Inception would be something to suggest. But I feel like that's too early to be putting people into faction warfare. What do you guys think is an ideal I think point that, in someone's career to start mentioning faction warfare? I think that the Inception MPE would be a good time to foreshadow faction warfare. But maybe not necessarily uh, demand it outright. Maybe not even like, well, you, you maybe not like as forceful as giving them a link, but even being like, you know, uh, if you like playing you know if you like this working for the glente stuff you should go check out the fdu or something like that you know just as a as a sign off or something a soft push well like they have the uh the new player missions the uh career agents maybe have one for militia you know well that's what jin is saying is that at the end of the uh advanced military career agent it actually does say if you like combat here's a thing to do so that's what I'm saying. Like maybe it doesn't even need to link it, but but just like a minor touch to it, a nod to it uh, as a foreshadowing, so that way later on, when when they see it in the agency, because it is coming in the agency next patch, um, it better it'll make more sense. Yeah, oh no, it's not sissy right now. Fun fact: the, the agency that having faction warfare in the agency was like the first thing everyone in the CSM thought when they showed us that feature. We were like, holy shit, that would make faction warfare so much easier. Yeah. Like if you could build some sort of intel into it, it'd be fucking great. I yeah, I, but, I think yeah. I think that uh, there's there's that there's two basic problems. Um, one is that it's very difficult to discover, as was pointed out, and and two is that uh, is the standings thing. Of all of the times that I've tried to like convince somebody who's in the know, the number one cited reason why somebody doesn't want to come and join uh, faction warfare is because they don't want to mess up their standings, and more importantly. They don't even understand how they will mess up their standings. They just know they don't even want to deal with it. Like, they, it, it just sounds too messy for them to worry about. And so they don't. Okay. Uh, is there... so, so from you guys' perspective, just to, just to tap on this again, so I make sure that I understand. I don't want to misrepresent you guys. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a native in faction warfare. I come to you guys and I fight every now and again and I enjoy it. I want to make sure that I'm taking your words, not my own. Um, 
would you say then that the the two primary reasons why people don't get involved in faction warfare, even if they're in that kind of gameplay demographic, is the downsides that come with it, and the lack of the lack of knowledge to get involved in, it. the lack of no knowing that it's actually there. Let me see. Uh, if I can add uh, something, add? yeah. Uh, so f uh, for the second reason, the second reason why I think uh, the feature is not uh, that uh, popular, uh, the the thing is, from what I've noticed, and from my a bit from my case too, uh, people people just move on. I mean, at one point, uh, I remember a lot of people um, I was flying with that were in uh, in a faction warfare. Uh, and at one point they just left because uh, either they didn't have anything left, more left to do, or uh, or the or there was better thing to do elsewhere. So, uh, so we have uh, we we kind of have a problem on both part, both end of uh, the spectrum. On the first one, people have trouble getting in because they don't know about it. And on the other hand, people leave because uh, they they reach a ceiling and uh, they, there's better more. Uh, rewarding stuff to do as well in the game. So they leave or or they just discover that um, life is actually better as a pirate because you get to shoot at more people. Uh, so stuff like that. And uh, uh, oh yeah, quickly uh, about uh, the uh, Inception uh, stuff. Uh, there is actually a very easy way to show to new players that uh, there is a PVP uh, uh, a PvP option available. I mean, at one point in the mission, uh, you are in ISEC. So at one point in the mission, you show uh, one pilot of uh, of your side next to you, and then there is another one from the, the enemy uh, uh, faction coming. And and uh, the NPC, uh, the the tutorial tells you, oh, uh, those two can shoot each other, and they probably will. And then you see them fight, and then he explains to you that. Those two are in a militia. They can uh, they can fight each other wherever they want. And uh, if you want later, after you are done with uh, uh, the NPC, you can you can join uh, that uh, that faction warfare. Pretty much. I I like that, but again, I think that that might just be too on the nose. I would actually suggest you don't even have to do that. Just that's what I meant by foreshadowing. Suggest the conflict, right? You don't even have to go into the, like, oh, there's a militia and you can join it and all that stuff. Just be like, if you're in the Caldari mission, be like the Galent, you know, say bad things about the Galente. Show that there is a conflict between the Galente and the Caldari that's active and lively and needs bodies, and then that may spur people. And then, you know, like I said, have a more. Interesting. Uh, did I um, miss any other X's? Sorry, Jin. I, I just, we we're kind of talking there really briefly about the difference, the, the problem that there's no super, super low end to get people in early, but there's also no super high end to get people in or to get people to stay long term. Would you guys prefer more done in the low end to get more people in, or would you prefer more done at the at the higher end to kind of get people to stay longer term? Which of those do you think is more important in general? I'm going to let Danny Lyon answer, and then I have an answer from a leadership point of view. Mm, okay. Uh... For me, clearly, it's for now. It's uh, the low, the low end. I mean, we need uh, more players. We need more bodies uh, in the features. Uh, but but eventually, we will have to take care of uh, of uh, the selling of uh, faction warfare. I think that's a pretty big problem of the feature. And there's one or two things that could be done to make it uh, a lot better for those who stay a long time in it. But but for now, uh, definitively, definitively the, the low end. We need more, more players in it. So for years, I have observed this pattern of alliances gaining strength with infection warfare and then eventually spinning off and going to null, right? Um, and... I've often, or, you know, for a long time, I wondered why that was, why, why can't people just be happy with being in faction warfare? Uh, and then 
I took I managed to lead a large faction warfare alliance, um, and the pressures of being a leader within faction warfare um, are pretty significant because faction warfare is entirely bottom up income, right? So as an alliance leader, I have all these asks of me to provide services for my membership, but no real income on a corporation or alliance level in order to maintain that those services or interest anybody, um, which makes it a very difficult problem to solve from a leadership point of view. Then we took SOV and I found out how good ratting taxes are. And then I realized that, that that's why this is happening, right? So it's not even necessarily the membership want to go to null, but there is actually an, a, a, a drive. There seems to be a draw for leadership to eventually want their people to evolve to this place where they can actually have their empire and everything like that. And I actually don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that there's this cycle of kind of power that happens from that. So uh, in that sense, I, I guess the, sh the, the short answer, that was the long answer. The short answer is more stuff for the low level people. Because I actually do like the idea that at a certain point, people that want to do something big and somebody want to do something bold will be drawn to do that in Null. Yeah, I actually just want to respond to something Dandelion's put in there, which is an LP tax. And that's actually something I brought up in my first summit. Um, LP taxes would be really, really good for faction warfare. The problem is that it, like, LP is super, super funky. It's not actually a, like, it doesn't go to a wallet. It, it, and it's very, very hard to code a tax on it because of that. And also, corporations can't have a LP wallet. So they give have it all to, to me. Have to, give yeah, it to the CEO. <laughs> so they'd have to put in a lot of time and effort to rework the entire LP system to make that possible. And whilst maybe that could happen one day, that's a lot of systems it's got to touch. It's got to touch the incursion systems. It's got to touch mission running systems. Uh, it's got to touch um, the Cosmos Arc system. It's got to touch faction warfare. Uh, is there anything else that uses LP? I think there are some other things that you don't say incursions. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. incursions. It's also got they also got that modify then the Concord LP thing. Uh, Did they you mention the ESS from ratting? ESS is from ratting as well. Yeah, like that's a whole lot of stuff that you've got to play with. So that's why they haven't just put an LP tax in the game yet. I just thought I'd um I I'd you know be fucking CCP shill here for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think most people appreciate that a lot of the long-standing issues exist not because CCP doesn't want to fix it, but because there's some sort of significant technical challenge or technical debt that would be required. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so do we have anything else on that topic? I think we can move on to the next one. Does the feature, i.e. Faction Warfare, have any key problems that could fundamentally change its value? And would those overhaul be simple or complex and or expensive? Which I think we're actually kind of already talking about when, when it comes to the LP. Uh, that, that would be a common suggestion. Um, another one that we talked about in the last one was about um, uh, the suspect flags in, in, in um, Plexus, which I would like to remind. We actually had some very good arguments on both directions on that one. Um, and then... I see uh, Varius pointing out Citadel's Dandelion. What do you have to say? Oh, um, I actually don't have that much to say. I mean, uh, Citadel, is, Citadel is, is clearly a big issue, but the problem is I have absolutely no idea how that could be solved. Uh, pretty much, that would be a pretty complicated uh, problem to solve. Uh, but, uh, I mean, at one point, it, it, it would have to, to be done, so... I, I would say, again, Citadels is one of those issues that I've obviously done a lot of thinking about, a lot of talking about because of the, its particular nature in faction warfare. I would say to restate the problem that it's more about the fact that our we individual system ownership isn't as important as it needs to be now. I don't know if the problem is fixing Citadels. I don't know if the problem is, or the solution is fixing the bonuses. I don't know what exactly the solution might be. 
But the problem fundamentally is that individual system ownership outside of uh, home systems, and even sometimes with home systems, isn't as important as they probably should be. Um, Gallic. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, well, the, the whole whining about citadels, I think it's not really constructive. Not only it has changed, you know, the, the de facto mechanics in, in faction warfare in low sec, but it has also changed it in null sec. Uh, and I would say even maybe more in null sec. Uh, when an alliance or a corporation wants to implement itself somewhere in null sec or wants to stage an invasion in null sec, well, what will they do? They will install a citadel. So it is exactly the same thing in low sec or in null sec. It's simply an evolvement of the of the high level game mechanics. So honestly, I've also did a lot of thinking about that, and I wouldn't say that Cedarless is a problem. Also, because it is a main driver of big fleet combats. So um, at the beginning, I, w I was also of the tendency to say, yeah, well, Cedarless uh, changes the 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 soft mechanics of low sec it's it changes the lockout system but after a while i'm telling to myself look all those nice battles happens a lot of those nice battles happens on citadels and on citadel timers so after all why would we remove citadels and why would we consider them as a unhealthy element in faction warfare yeah i i personally the more i've talked about it, the more i've thought about it the more i think that um the problems with structures in faction warfare are kind of the same problems of uh, structures in a lot of places and so upwell 2.0 is a big response not just to faction warfare but all structures and i think that those changes are going to be pretty positive i don't know if they're going to go far enough but i'm pretty sure nobody knows whether or not they're going to go far enough but i think that this the solution is going to be just making structures make more sense making structures easier to clear off and making it less impactful um, for long periods of time. Um, that being said, I think Dandelion has some other t problems that he wants to bring up. Uh, actually, I'm going to go back to Citadel. Uh, the thing is, uh, I kind of see the point. I mean, uh, it's, um, uh, it's something that touch uh, a lot more levels than just uh, faction warfare. But uh, the, the problem is there is one pretty big uh, case uh, with that in that um, one of the main drive of faction warfare is the access uh, to station. Uh, if you are in a militia, you cannot access uh, the station of the other militia. And uh, the, the system was based on that for, for years. I mean, maybe it was a bad idea. Maybe it should just be removed and you can go to any station you want. And, uh, you know, the reward would be linked to something else. But for, for now, one of the rewards of uh, your faction owning a system is that you can access the station in it. That's, that's kind of an advantage for many things. Uh, I mean, for now, the, the fact that citadels touch this thing, I mean, it's, it's a non-negligible problem. But it could be also solved by just removing this wall, um, this wall caring about uh, uh, you cannot access a station if you are from this faction or this faction. But it's something to consider, I think. Correct. And that's, and that's kind of why I said what I said earlier, which is that um, it's more about making sure that system ownership on an individual level feels important, which is what System Lockout was originally designed to do. All right, Jin, I think yeah. it's your turn. I wanted to just quickly ask a question of like, how many of the um, the smaller problems that I know make faction warfare less of an enjoyable experience, like um, uh, botting, for example. I, I know there's a lot of plex botting in faction warfare right now. And, um, you know, stabbed farmers are obviously a problem that kind of helps to hurt content. Do you guys think that um, adding more people to the war zone um, would help to solve those issues. Well, yes, because bots cannot. The, yes. the bots cannot operate. I guess. when there is somebody there interfering with them. I mean, I, I can elaborate, but uh, yeah. Okay. I'm. Do you think there are any other problems that having simply more people in the war zone would solve? Mm, 
Uh, not really. I mean, uh, there is even if we get more people, the problem is uh, it's kind of hard to get. I mean, it's not that hard, but uh, it, it gets more difficult by the day to get fight in uh, the, the war zone. So potentially, uh, the, the people who come in first will will fight, and you know they will do they will discover PvP experiment and all of this. But slowly and slowly they will realize that the system rewards them more if they don't fight if they just try to capture as many places as they can and just uh, you know you know the whole deal like uh, i'm going to make some some alts and make, make them uh, run a bunch of places and even if i die i don't care um so yeah I, Adding more people will not resolve that. I mean, one of the smaller problems outside of Citadel uh, that we have is uh, our main content generator not working, or at least not performing as much as it, as it should. So uh, yeah, we one of the smaller problems we will need to solve is uh, plexes. They are important. They are content gener generator. Um, yeah, outside of that, uh, mission, mission, mission. We should talk about that. Yeah, uh, we actually had we've had a lot of discussion about missions uh, in the previous one. I think something I want to actually hit on here um, is that you guys are talking a lot about problems that are faced by uh, players that are really enfranchised in faction warfare. Things like citadels and um, LP taxes. Whereas when we went earlier and we talked about what's the main value that faction warfare adds to the game we talked about it aiding new players and it Ooh. making it easier for new players to get involved Ooh, i got what this one what do you guys think are the problems facing newer players i got this one okay brand new player we've seen i've seen this hundreds of times brand new player joins faction warfare runs a plex gets lp ready to make money oh crap can't cash out has no money so what we do is we give our new players a little bit of starting cash if they need to in order to keep the engine or to get the engine running. But if you have zero money, faction warfare is actually a really difficult place to get that first bit of money started, and mm. you're already in a kind of a more dangerous area and whatnot. Um, again, not 100% sure how to fix that, but like because of the fact that plexes only award LP and then LP requires ISK to cash out, it makes it so that if you have no ISK, you can't make any. What about giving bounties to um, Plex rats? Oh, so that you can make a little bit of this whilst you're running the Plex as a necessary part. Well, it would need uh, balancing, but it's a really good idea, I think. Actually, fun Angel, fact... It's kind of an elegant solution. I think uh, it's a specific problem. Yeah, it is an elegant solution. Jay, you're being kind of, you're qu kind of quiet. I turned you up all the way and you're still really quiet, by the way. That's why I was tom That's why I stepped on you. It wasn't intentional. Oh my bad. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So um, um, you're talking. Okay. There's, there's a suggestion there by Night Guard Fury, which is be interesting to see Resource Wars style of NPC help versus enemy NPC. Is that something that's good in plexes, where the vast majority of people who want to go into plexes are theoretically? for the main value that F Faction Warfare provides, as explained earlier, is for PvP and not PvE. I will voice on behalf of a lot of the uh, people that I've talked to a lot that I I've suggested stuff like this a lot because I'm a big fan of the new AI, and I've received a lot of resistance because people are very concerned with the fights being disrupted somehow. Like, once the PvP starts... The PVE needs to basically be as as non of an issue as possible for people, but while there is no PVP, that's when the PVE is is interesting. If that makes sense, um, it's worth noting that before the last faction warfare change, there were a lot more rats in plexes, and players would kill the rats and get the tags. And there are still tags. In fact, uh, medium tags are still worth like almost half a million each. Um, but the problem is, is that you know, with the reduced tags amount, it makes it so that that income was eliminated. And it was brought up during that time, and CCP said that if it was a major impact, then they would look into it. I don't think it was a major impact, which is why it didn't really get changed. But 
it is an interesting way of looking at when you're talking about the the bounties, right? Because that that would have been kind of the equivalent. So it used to be that <laughs> killing the rats was way more valuable than they are now, or way more right. bigger part of the value, I should say. Uh, do we have other X's? I I might have missed them. Hold on, Danny Lion. Yeah. Uh, I did. Oh, go for it. Uh, I just had an idea with the, the with the money issue you brought up. Uh, so you might um, add like so if you're a real soldier in in real life, you get paid by your country. Uh, Yvonne Lin is handling that through the for the LP, of course. But for the new players, you might add like uh, that if they join and they do a couple of flexes, they get um, a one-time payment. Which would make it more realistic and help them get started so they can actually use their LP. So I'm going to jump off of that and then I'll let Night Guard Fury have a turn. Um, so you just totally inspired me for a second. One of the things that frustrates me is that, C or that, that Faction Warfare doesn't feel like you're part of something bigger, even though by definition you're part of something bigger. So I think that this would be a really good place for one of those like leaderboard kind of concepts, right? So if every week you received a readout of all how many victory points you got, which by the way, victory points totally exist and nobody knows anything about it because they're obfuscated even like the only way you really know how victory points work is if you pay attention to the API. But under uh, fundamentally that's how all of the plexing works and it's how all of the leaderboards that are in faction warfare works. So if there is some way for you to like receive your report at the end of the week, you've done these plexes You've done. You've gotten this much stuff done, and here's your bonus contribution. You know, here's your bonus for for the effort that you have done. And guess what? We could tax that. Ha ha. Uh, I think that that actually might be an interesting thing. If you got like a weekly paycheck and report based on what you have done for that week for the federation or for the or sorry for the faction that you belong to. Uh, you just took my idea and took it to a whole level, uh, a whole new level. Well, it's a good idea. I'm not I'm not sure if that's something CCP would be interested in, but it's an interesting idea to to bring to them at the very least. I think the leaderboards and just trying to motivate people through social pressure, that's something that's very, very present and something they're very interested in. We I could definitely see them having like a, these are the top 10 corporations that contributed to the war this year. Or we this have week. that. We actually do have that. That kind of stuff is oddly in the oh, API right. now. Oh. It's just, like I said, it's based off of victory points, so nobody understands it. And... Um, it only should like we can i'll show you it more later afterwards it's it's kind of a mess okay so maybe cleaning that up, cleaning up an existing feature could could help motivation in faction warfare potentially yes night okay that's a good thing to know night guard Fury, mm. did you have something to say is he here no he acts up and he's not here all right moving on um if I can say something about that, Go the leader, leaderboard. Yeah, okay. Uh, personally, I think that wouldn't be, uh, okay, I don't want to shut down the ID, but I, I don't really see what it would add. And, and most importantly, I think it would only reward one kind of player, which would be the, uh, I don't want to say it like that, but that's uh, the term, the, the no life, you know, pretty much that would be the, the guy who would spend his entire time doing just that all the time and that guy or that corporation will be the first one on the leaderboard uh, I, I mean it could be good for them a good source of content for them but i don't think in the long term it's good for the game i mean it's going to burn burn those people and everyone else that is not going to be uh, first or at even a good position on that le leaderboard is going to be like oh this, this is this system is stupid why why do we even bother? So uh, I I don't really like it. Oh, and, and one point I want to, to say one point really quick. Uh, don't give please do not give money to uh, do not give money directly to reward people in faction warfare. I mean, uh, one very good thing we have is that we don't need we are not rewarded in liquid isk in our system. So it makes the system a good way to combat inflation in the game, which could potentially be a problem one day because I mean 
the amount of liquid is uh, seems kind of absurd in my opinion. But anyway, uh, I I don't think rewarding by liquid is is a good idea, even for a new player. It's better to have stuff that can be, uh, you know, that can be dropped when you explode wow. someone that, uh, something that just go to the wallet. It's a, it's a good point. Um, I actually, I've, I've, I've for a long time said that Faction Warfare provides a service to EVE, which is that because we sell faction equipment, uh, we sell, we, we basically turn rich people's ISK into explosions. That's our job. And that actually brings us very nicely onto the next question, which is, is the feature, uh, is the feature important for the EVE economy or the, the EVE community? I'd like to hit economy first, if possible. I think I might have reworded that question when I wrote it to you, actually. Yeah, it, it says, uh, what I got here is, what impact does the feature have on the bigger picture of the game, and how do its problems affect other features? Yes, that's, that's what I meant by uh, the economy. Yeah, so, I mean, the obvious answer, uh, while people are getting ready to X up and stuff, the obvious answer is our equipment is sold to other people, and that can be shortened by we talking about VNIs and all that stuff um, last time. So, our, in theory, if Faction Warfare is lively and changing is going back and forth, the economy will feel that on a supply-side pressure. And um, interestingly enough, it doesn't necessarily equate the way that you would expect because basically Plex, it, it depends on where people are going for their, for their LP, right? So as like when Mimitar and Amar keep flipping it back and forth. So when Amar is really, really high, things are going to get really, really cheap. But then people flip over to Mimitar and start gaining that LP because it's going to become more valuable. Um, however, in the Galente Caldari war zone, you see uh, a lot more stagnation, not necessarily stagnation, but a lot, you know, we, we've been in the kind of the same state for a long time. And so the Galente LP is devalued and the uh, Caldari LP is, is very high. Mm -hmm. Consequently, that makes that, that, that the consequence of that is like Caldari, uh, sorry, Caracal Navy issues um, would be much more expensive than Vexor Navy issues. Sorry, I am. Uh, oh, we didn't actually address that. Sorry, I'm running from like the actual original questions, but I broke them down into like slightly more sections when I was talking to Ashrothi because I wanted to kind of dig a little deeper. So that's why I missed that question. I'm very sorry. Um, we can do that one at the end, I think. Um, so right now, that economy thing's pretty good. The LP inequality thing is very interesting, but I'm not sure how you would solve that. Is there any way to like? put a minimum is there any way to put like a minimum price of lp is there any way to like say if you're gonna cash out stuff it'll either be in these faction modules or you know there'll be a set rate at this thing which is needed for like some level of industry uh, do you guys think that would be good if there was like a a rate basically that lp was would find it very very difficult to go below i think that that's actually the problem that we're having um, for instance, the VNI has created a floor of about a thousand ISK per LP. It doesn't matter how much LP you get. Um, and while Kaldari is worth way more than that, it's making it so that, you know, that one item is making it so the Glente LP is basically not going to go lower than it currently is. And so I would actually argue that the opposite should be true. I think that Faction Warfare should be much more dependent on external pressures because we are fundamentally a proxy war right so i i think that other people's vested interest in 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 what we produce should or could be a driver for us and that's not necessarily a bad thing but i'm gonna head uh head it over to perimpu how oh, i said uh, scratch it i don't really have a, a solution okay i just wanted to say uh, something to the original uh question Go for it. Yeah, when it comes to the bigger picture of the game, uh, we all know the killboard, for example, and we just had a, a big uh, war zone in Merkur Museum, for, for example, a low sex system that was turned, and the system was actually turning up on Z-Kill as the 
second or third most active system on the uh, yeah in the whole Eve University Eve universe. So a lot of people were coming down here to get content, and we even had like bigger, really big fights. That happens a lot, actually. Almost every major yeah, like, yeah. offensive in faction warfare usually tops the charts for I a mean, couple of days. What uh, what he's saying is true. I mean, at one point, uh, faction warfare was uh, by far the most uh, the most active uh, area in the game. I mean, I, I remember when it was like summer of sub. Uh, a bit after that. People were uh, a little bit uh, disappointed by the soft system, and uh, you had a bunch of people who came uh, down to Faction Warfare to pretty much have fun. And I remember I could boast around that, hey, we are living in the most active, uh, in the place with the most explosion. And yeah, not so much anymore. I mean, I think they all went back to NullSec eventually, but yeah. Uh, to circle back to Jin's question in chat, um, the one complication about creating a swingy system is that, remember, this is EVE and we're not actually committed to what we're supposed to be doing. So if you look over on the uh, Mimitar Amar side, it's much more swingy than the Galente Kaldari side, but it's honestly largely the same people just jumping from side to side. So it's not like two sides that are diametrically opposed to each other that's pushing back and forth. It's more, oh, it's more money if we flip it back and forth so we're just going to do that um i'm not 100 percent sure why galente and caldari didn't get that way i think we're just way more bitter or it's the 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 higher number of systems that make it harder to do that no but we used to no, be the same way too like back when the old faction warfare system when it when it was like you got lp based on your tier at cash out it was swinging every month because that was the way to do it um, it's just Mimitar and Amar remained that way. Mm, quickly, I think the only one of the reasons that uh, it didn't went this way for Galdari, uh, Galantic Galdari, is uh, the ideology. We actually do hate each other. I mean, uh, the Galdari don't like uh, the way uh, those pervert, uh, those pervert Galante, and the Galante don't like those uh, autocratic. Uh, uh, oui, autocratic uh, uh, Kaldari. So I think there is a bit of ideology. People actually do uh, feel close to the factions, like people really feel like they are Kaldari, and the, if people really feel like they are Galante, like they fight for freedom and for drugs and stuff like that. I, I, I think that's it. I find it funny. So you're suggesting that the the conflict of corporations versus freedom is more compelling to people than the battle over slavery? <laughs> Yes, I think that slavery is probably something that feels very distant to a lot of people, so it's kind of harder to get as uh, philosophically involved. In it. Like, everyone knows slavery is bad. I mean, in real life, you know, not in character. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. I, I think pretty much people don't take seriously the slavery of the Minmetar, like, oh, they, they are exaggerating, it couldn't be that bad. <laughs> So yeah, they don't really feel inclined to fight for the liberation of the tribal people. I, I mean, personally, that's one of that's the way I feel. I actually like Amar. They, they are pretty cool. I like their shit. I I think honestly, a, a big piece of all of this is that the general uh, zeitgeist of Eve is more towards player action and less towards the lore and the story and the universe and all that stuff. And faction warfare is being kind of part NPC. Um, suffers for that because if you want to What's really, happening? really, really dig into being a Mimitar guy, there isn't even really the tools to do that, right? Like if you, uh, uh, Amar have a lot of really great information to dig into, beautiful characters, wonderful history and all that stuff, but there's some big holes in the story and there's a, there's not a lot to give to people who want to be motivated by those kinds of things as well um and so that kind of maligns the whole thing the, the zeitgeist thing the the fact that pl people the player base in general uh prioritize player driven stuff and so i think that that kind of helps promote a negative stigma of faction warfare so here's a question um do you guys think that actually tying it to the law potentially 
makes it more appealing to a game uh, a, a certain demographic of players that otherwise wouldn't be as interested in PvP. Do you think having that kind of lore aspect potentially makes it more engageable to some people? Uh, as in it gives them a reason to fight. I know that um, as much as CCP has kind of waffled on it in the past, players unironically are passionate about earning the medal that they get when they take the whole war zone. And I think that that's part of that, right? That it's the recognition. It's the senpai noticed me. It's the something about the, 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 the bigger picture. But I'm going to hand it over to Gallic. Yeah, so that's, uh, I know, Ashtaroti, that it's a, it's a big topic that you, that is very important for you. Uh, the whole lore and role playing with respect to EVE Online and especially factional warfare. Do you honestly think that people really, really care about the role playing aspect? If there is one failure in EVE Online, and I don't want to play the bitter vet here, it's the fact that, honestly, the lore is created by the players. It's not uh, something that is pushed uh, top down. It's really something that is created bottom up. Um, should it be different in faction warfare? Honestly, it's, a, it's an open question. Purampu. Yeah, I am actually one of those guys who uh, mainly joined because he said, like, I really enjoy the role playing aspect. I joined because I always wanted to be a soldier and a I could be a soldier for the for, for the Galante, and I always enjoyed role playing a little bit, not the uh, too nerdy part, of course. And and local, for example, with the squids, and I always enjoyed um, the more role play uh, strict fleets, for example, where you uh, you you where you just follow the orders uh, like a true soldier. And I, for um, that point, I also liked the the mails you get when you get promoted and that it actually shows your rank because like I said before I love rankings and medals and all this stuff so this is actually a huge part for me I remember for a long time as a huge part for me too I think that that feeling eroded because of the fact that it's not terribly impactful um, so I guess that's my I, I guess that's what I was saying earlier where if somebody is interested in digging in, if somebody is interested in caring, there isn't the tools to then go and do that. And so that leads to potentially disappointment, I think. Uh, yeah, I can agree because like, in, if you're playing role play games and you are a, you have a high ranking in PVP, for example, in your faction, and you walk through, this, through the city and the guards will greet you and talk about how cool you are and that's just not possible in EVE Online because a ship can't wink at you, uh, wave at you, or whatever, uh, salute at you. So that's uh, kind of a let down on that note. What do you think about potentially um, having something in Faction Warfare, like a live event, that would uh, give people more of a lore drive? I don't know, have like a some sort of... Um, and a victory parade for the winner or whatever. Would that be oh. interesting? Uh, of course. But um, also this, the small thing I noticed, uh, I, I mentioned before, like if you do a plex, you could also have a, uh, if there's no PvP engagement, of course, you could also have a little NPC from your own faction warp in, do a little thing in the local uh, and help you out and warp out after you're done, for example. That would be really cool for the, uh, I mean, maybe it's just a small portion, but uh, yeah. Okay, well, I just thought I'd pitch that because I'm always looking for reasons to convince higher ups in CCP that they should do more live events because, yeah. Yeah, especially when it comes <laughs> to like the events team and whatnot and the idea that they are installing kind of seasons into things and like periods of time, it would really make sense for, you know, uh, Actually, a really good example is last year with the Kainoke Plague, right? The Kainoke Plague, and then the blockade, and then the breaking of the blockade, and then the kind of going back to normal. Each of those steps could have had some sort of change in either reward structure or maybe uh, short-term rewards that could be purchased in the LP store that normally couldn't be, or you know, whatever it is, right? Bonus stuff showing up in sites. 
whatever you do, to make it so that we feel like we are part of our empire's larger effort. Mm -hmm. Well, I think now is probably a good time to move on to uh, another question, because I know you're trying to get out of this relatively yes. quickly, Ashrothi, and that's um, what impact does the feature have on the bigger picture of the game, and how do its problems affect other features in the game? That's the one we are doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we talked about the uh, the economy, and that was very very pointed on the economy. But I'm interested in finding out what impacts you guys think faction warfare has on the, the greater game, if any. I think it has a significant impact in low sec, obviously, because it ter changes the terrain of low sec. Um, not so much about other places, but Dantelion. Uh, okay. Uh. I think uh, faction warfare could do one thing, and one thing uh, could benefit the if uh, the game. Uh... Okay, just to be sure, are we talking about the game in general, uh, in general, like outside of the game, uh, or are we talking purely in the universe, like uh, the system, or affecting another region, or something like that? Uh, no, the game, as in the game is a. a, a, a fucking system that generates money. No hobby or something like that. Uh, okay. I, I, I guess if there's like big picture stuff that it's important to, but I, I can't see a larger impact from Faction Warfare inside of the game. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to say one word, streaming. I mean, that's that's a big thing that Faction Warfare can bring to, to the game, whether it is uh, the community or uh, the, the game uh, at the outside of the game. When you are not playing, you can actually watch a stream of someone playing. Uh, Faction Warfare is the best place for streamers. I mean, uh, NullSec kind of has potential, but the problem is you spend your time jumping uh, in multiple uh, in a, in a big place and you have to go from a lot of system and you are not even sure that you are going to find people faction warfare offers the guarantees of a place with content and for a streamer that's very very fucking important i'm going to say that uh, you don't you don't want to be jumping for uh, for 10 20 jumps without anything happening otherwise otherwise people leave um so uh, the, the plexus. The plexus can be the best friend of a, of a streamer, and if we if we change them in a, in a way to make them to accommodate them accommodate them more, I mean, one of the big uh, thing I want to I want to suggest to CCP is the idea of uh, of uh, ship control, like we uh, not quantity of ship control right now we has we we have size control like we can control uh, today i'm going to fight frigate to, uh, tomorrow i'm going to fight a cruiser something like that uh, i would like a streamer to be able to say i'm going to take two, uh, two three people uh, that i know in my stream we are going to go in this system we're going to be in that place and if you want to fight us you can come or we are going to fight some people that we know are going to be there so yeah uh, pretty much streaming. Streaming is like the big thing Faction Warfare can contribute to. Very insightful. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Gallic, do you have more to add? Oh, yeah, absolutely. About the fact, about the question of what could Faction Warfare bring to the, um, to the overall uh, narrative of, of the game. Well, I think we will all agree that the biggest story of this year was that uh, Galente Factional Warfare Alliances took a big chunk of uh, NullSec territory. Uh, that was really a big, big, big story. So did, that's a part of the big narrative. Um, this is something that we didn't see before. Also, uh, I could perfectly imagine, uh, Jintan, you're here, uh, that um, CVA could be, uh, as it is MR uh, role-playing oriented, uh, that you are, you know, uh, favorable to the MR faction warfare uh, um, corporations and alliances, and that you maybe could also, that some of your corporations could participate in factional warfare. Uh, we actually things... did participate for the past, like, two years. Yes. It's just that yes. we dropped for reason. But basically, at the start of this war, we dropped because we had to get our logistics sorted. Exactly. I also, th and I think there is a, um, a, a mechanical system, a technological and development question here. Um, I remember that um, 
you remember when Brave, Brave Collective uh, had the factional warfare alliance uh, called Brave Squids in Caldera Militia. They had to create this uh, specific alliance because mechanically it's not possible to have corporations within an alliance that is not aligned to factional warfare, but having the corporations themselves aligned to factional warfare. This might be something interesting. For example, Guardians of the Galaxy having their sister alliance, Guardians of the Gates, or maybe CVA having some specific corporations within factional warfare. So yes, I think that there could be a real impact in, uh, on the bigger narrative of EVE Online outside of streaming or, or out of game stuff. I also think it can't be underestimated how important it is as a breeding ground for people to just kind of test the waters for things. Um, again, you know, there, there's some barriers to entry for conceptualization, but if those were to be eliminated, uh, I think that we could see faction warfare being a really nice place for people to go to if they're if they don't know which empire they want to join yet and they just want to step up into the pvp game all right well that that kind of wraps up most of the things i wanted to ask about so um there was the other question which was about demographics but i did talk about that before anyway in terms of me asking the question of would new, new players getting involved kind of fix some of the problems in faction warfare? And it sounds like that yes is the answer. Well, it, it's gonna, it would be interesting, right? Because as the population increases, then the value of plexing and mission running goes down. And what, I, what will happen, what might happen, is that it'll hit a critical mass, right? Because basically, uh, mission running require in, in faction warfare requires you to go s lots of jumps away several jumps away uh which can be interfered with so if there's lots of people out there there's all sorts of gate camps and that would become a very deadly affair um likewise plexing really the more people that come and mess with you the the less money you make so um as that goes up if that becomes critical if that gets to a point where you where people feel that they can't complete enough plexes to make the money for their supplies that could be an increasing problem, so it's something to monitor as the numbers go up. But other than those two things, which I think could easily be remedied and worked out and probably should, um, they, then I think that a population increase would, be, would fix 99% of everything else. Or a huge portion of everything else, I should say. Yeah, uh, Varys is suggesting something which is uh, increased LP for kills would be tight AF. That will literally never happen because of 4x. If you want to know why or what 4x is, Google 4x EVE Online and you'll find out about how people made billions upon billions of isk and nearly destroyed the LP market. Oh, goons. It's pretty fun. It, it it's actually good. probably one of my favorite stories in EVE Online. I, I love that. I love that. The fact that that was a thing that people figured out. Anyway. All right. Uh, I think that that about wraps it up. I'm going to give everybody a few more seconds to, to give any X's. Um, and then I will, um, I don't know. How do you want to wrap this up? I guess we could just say goodbye. Unless, does anybody have any shout outs or anything that they want to get across? Thank you all for participating. Uh, you probably need to give an intro because your intro um, got cut because of audio issues. Yeah. I'm also going to go back and like add a little like intro at the beginning of it but um okay so dan the lion uh so shout out or i can uh, talk about something really quick sure okay um let me see so yeah i i wanted to talk about uh, the community uh in our space right now uh the thing is uh, the the problem we have is um the militia, the militia uh, channel. The channel uh, is a good way uh, for people to realize that there are other people in the militia that they can form fleet with them and all those things. But um, I, I mean, it's one of the way people can find other people to do a fleet with to to go plex uh, some stuff. The the problem is it's a bit inefficient for that. 
And uh, the Fleet Finder, I uh, always found uh, the F Fleet Finder uh, pretty uh, lackluster. Uh, pretty much, if they could be, uh, if there was a way to uh, integrate in uh, in uh, the the agency, I always forget the name of this thing. The agency a way to okay. I'm not. I'm going to say that I'm not going to. I'm not suggesting uh, some kind of uh, event finder or something like that. But a way to make people uh, get into contact to run a Plex or to uh, to do anything in the war zone. I think that could be useful, especially if it is integrated in the agency. Oh, and hey, hold on. Have you been the on agency yet? Have you been to, on for recently? faction warfare? I mean, uh, from what I've heard, uh, they are going to show um, Plexes uh, in it. Maybe, but uh, one thing too that could be uh, very good uh, with the agency is uh, integrating mission. I mean, uh, retooling, retooling mission into into agency specific uh, content. Like, uh, if someone uh, pop a mission, uh, start a mission, the site that he has to go to uh, to uh, to do whatever he has to do in the mission could be visible in uh, the agency. That would be a way for people to know, oh, there's someone who is going this way, uh, someone from the other faction, I can go and pay him a visit. But, so anyway, those two things, a better way to find other people, you know, so people can f fly together in faction warfare, it builds a community and all those things. And integrating a mission as a, as a agency specific content that would help uh, spark more conflict. So yeah, community. I also want to throw out there one more thing that I forgot earlier um, when I was talking about kind of the ease of new players into checking things out. There's something that needs to be or uh, the militia chat channel, I think, gets a lot of um, bad press or bad thought, but it really is almost like a functional um, NPC corp channel. I, I've used it to form fleets. I've used it to recruit for people. It's a really good way for someone who has taken that step to join Faction Warfare and now wants to do that next step of like getting involved. Um, I, I think that it's actually been relatively successful in that round. So I think that that's one of the strengths of Faction Warfare that it has that maybe Nullsec doesn't have. All right, I will give everybody one last chance to uh, X up if they have anything important to say, and then I'll hand it over to Jay McLean because he's loud and obnoxious. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I was just uh, I was just talking to Jintan. Um, he made the reference of getting uh, Faction Warfare LP-only skins, and I think that would be pretty amazing. It would be a, a really unique thing to give to the factions uh, for their factions types of ships. I am mm -hmm. unironically frustrated that Resource Wars skins literally cannot be accessed by us because we're in low sec and we can't go do the Resource war. or I mean, you know what I mean. But that because they're bound, uh, many of us can't go and uh, retrieve them. So having, it, it goes back to that pride and identity, like how many Faction Warfare guys have the beret on? I know I do. You know, how many people, they're silly and it's meaningless, but, you know, I, I, I'm in Galente. I want to show my pride. I want to, I want everything about me to reflect the fact that that's what I'm doing. 100% agree. I think that's probably a really widespread sentiment. I think that's actually a pretty good uh, note to leave that on, you know. Uh, if I'm, if I'm going to be part of Faction Warfare, I want to be, feel like I'm part of my faction and I want to be given the tools to, to take pride in that um and i you guess possibly have the rest of the game reflect that as well or at least aspects of the game or in space in the areas where faction warfare is happening yeah a i want to i want to just say that i uh i really appreciate everyone coming and talking to me about this i i'm obviously you know it's obviously a huge help to have people be willing to spend this much time it shows how much passion people have for faction warfare and I think that's equally as important as ECP to see is that, you know, I ask people to come and talk about some fucking questions that are laden with corporate speak and we get like, you know, 20 people on comms. How many people are watching the stream, Ashtrothy? Uh, 11. Yeah. 
right now. You know, it's it's just, that's that's not that, you know, it's thirty people. We're we're competing with the CCP the channel right now, so. <laughs> no, I'm a, people largely actually these things are usually watched afterwards, honestly. But um. Yeah, most of these things are a post kind of thing, especially with the what time it is in Europe right now. That being said, I do also want to say thank you all for coming. Uh, in particular, with such short notice, we wanted to uh, get as fast of a turnaround as possible because uh, CCP noticed us, so we want to be able to give answers to their questions. So, uh, thank you all for coming and giving your insightful uh, answers and working through us, through with us, through all these questions. Uh, and I guess with all of that, on behalf of Jinton, myself, and all of my guests, thank you all for watching or listening, and we'll see you in space.